launch control. Oh, he didn't do launch control. I remember. I laid money. Okay guys, I'm back in town. Sorry I've been slacking on you. I took the epic GT3 adventure of my life with uh, 40 or so other 991 GT3s, a couple of 997 GT3 RSs. We you know, allowed those piece of junk cars in the group. <laughs> but um, I wanted to, I uh, figured I'd start off with a money shot today. <laughs> the car's already foamed, ready to go. Uh, you guys have seen me wash a car 10 times now, so I don't know how much uh, help, how helpful the washing the car part is. But you know, I know that most of you think that I have uh, the greatest life in the world where I never have to never have to answer to anybody. My wife lets me do whatever I want, and I clearly never ever work. Um, but that's not really the case. So I'm trying to sneak in a quick wash and and, and do a video at the same time, so that. Um, Maybe I can stay out of trouble this weekend since I went away for five days um, last weekend to, to take the GT3 trip. Uh-oh, so much for getting not getting in trouble. My <laughs> wife's home. So what I, you know, kind of like what I did with the, uh, with the car progression video, what I thought I'd do in order to sort of maximize my time here is I would tell you the, the, the story of the trip and wash the car at the same time. Again, keep myself out of trouble. Okay, got my little cutie assistant here with me. Little, little Katie Katester. What's up, Katie? She's gonna help me wash the car. So as I was saying, what, what, I, what I was gonna do is sort of kill two birds with one stone. Hopefully make this a useful video. And I want to tell you that this, this, the story of the trip up to the mountains. Some of you guys are going to lose your minds. Uh, I'm doing a quick wash here. I haven't, I haven't washed the car yet, um, but I'm going to wash the wheels when I'm done. You know, carbon ceramics allow you to just kind of wipe the wheels down. So um, I'm going to, and it's shady out. The sun's sun setting, and uh, or not setting, but the sun's uh, wherever the heck it is over in the west, or yeah, in the west. So um, calm down. Don't get too excited. I'm going to wipe the wheels down and the tires down after I'm done with the paint. And as long as you let the Adams paint, well, Adams soap sit on the paint, you won't get any water spots. Hey, baby. <laughs> so let me start you from the beginning. So it was about six months ago that uh, one of the guys on the forum, I guess a couple of guys on the forum on Renless got together and decided, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we put together a little, a little group of guys to go drive around in the mountains. And I think they were thinking, you know, five people. And then when they threw it out there, you know, I was jumped on it pretty quickly. You know, I said, I'm in, sign me up. And um, I think what happened is that, you know, five turned into 10, 10 turned into 20, 20 turned into 40. And before you know, we had, I think 44 people signed up to go take a little adventure through the mountains. So the, the um, the guy on the the guys on the forum put in tons of effort, tons of work to sort of organize this epic event, if you will. You know, I don't I don't like to travel, but this is something I knew I wasn't going to want to miss. 
plus I don't like driving my car that far. So the you know the idea behind the trip was, hey, keep it down. You want to see what's going on? There you go. Katie Kate started crawling this week. Are you gonna cause problems? I'm trying to watch it, make a video. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mayor, one of the guys in the forum, decided that you know we should do this trip in May. Him and him and another guy named Sean decided you know we're gonna we're gonna put this epic trip together, and they did a massive amount of planning. So, we the trip started last Thursday. Wednesday night I taped the car up, I taped the whole the whole roof up, I taped the whole front of the car up, got it ready to go because I decided that we should take the the highway instead of uh, so take 75 up rather than what I normally would do would be take highway 129 up and skip sort of the skip in between Atlanta and, and um, Athens and because we were meeting in, in North Atlanta. Hey, Katie, keep it down. If you want to be my detailing assistant, you can't be yelling when we're on TV, when we're on camera, okay? <laughs> so as I was saying, my dad and I, I flew my dad down, he's gonna go with me. So I taped up the front of the car, got all ready to go, and um, decided we're going to Drive up Thursday early in the morning. Hey! Drive up Thursday early in the morning. And uh, that way we'd get there in time to get to the hotel, get checked in, go wash my car. And because uh, I thought for sure love bugs would be, would have destroyed us. And, and so we got there around 1 o'clock, 1.30, something like that. Well, to my surprise, and it was supposed to rain, by the way, all week, so it was going to kind of suck with these Pilot Sport Cup 2s. These tires would be all over the freaking place. The car would be sliding around all over. But it turned out to be the greatest weather ever. So when I drove up there, not a single love bug, not one love bug, not one bug, nothing. The car was, it was almost a waste of time to wash it. But I wanted to get the, I wanted to get the, um, the tape residue off, if there was any. There was a little bit of tape residue. So we got there, washed the car, then came back to the hotel, and sure enough, there were, I don't know, maybe six or eight GT3s there, and, uh, and in the process of, um, you know, I was checking in the whole thing, I look out the window, and then now there's 10, and then there's 15. I think like 18 or something like that of us stayed at the hotel. Um, but checked in, took a little nap, and we were gonna head over to, to a barbecue where you know, a bunch of people were gonna be meeting us on, on the Lake, Lake Lanier. So we, around you know, five o'clock or so, we all started coming outside. And the funny thing is, you know, you guys are, you guys are gonna laugh at this, but you know, apparently with my YouTube fame, <laughs> quote and air quotes, um, everybody are sort of already know, not maybe not everybody, but most everybody already knows who I am. Plus, you know, on Renlist, I'm I maintain a journal, and um, and then you know, sort of everybody knows what I look like because I'm putting myself on YouTube all the time, posting DIYs and detailing videos and stuff like that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Some of these guys, you know, these are successful businessmen and, you know, intelligent engineers and doctors and lawyers and, you know, you kind of have to be somewhat successful in order to own a, a GT3. But, you know, many guys were coming up, you know, I love your stuff. And I, and I you know, I kind of chuckle at it because I'm just doing this for fun. And, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that some of this stuff is helpful. At least that's what some of you guys tell me. So that's part of the reason why I keep doing it.
And so we all sort of gather up. Somehow, since I'm the YouTube leader that I am. Hey, pipe down, baby. What do you want? You want these? There you go. They, I get nominated to lead us out and take us to where the, now I'm not from Atlanta, I don't know Atlanta very well, or North Atlanta, or whatever you want to call it. I, uh, I don't know anything about where we are, but somehow I get nominated to take us there, to, to where the picnic is. So naturally, the GPS directions were a little off. I blew right past the place, and I've got 10 other cars following behind me, and we, we, we got a little lost, but it only took a few minutes for us to get back on track. Actually, our photographer came out and found, found us. We, we all put, chipped in and hired a photographer for the weekend. So you get there, again, more people shaking my hand. So happy, to, so pleased to meet you. Um, met some really cool people. You know, these are, these are our people, you know, our, our, our other fellow crazies who are into cars, maybe not quite as into it as I am, um, as I seem to be on a whole nother level, but you know, many of them are into it in their own right. And so instantly, you know, there's, there's, we don't know each other. We, some of us know each other a little bit from the forums. Nobody knows what anybody looks like. And yet it was like we were old friends. We all knew each, we were all friends for years and just differences were meeting for the first time. So it wasn't like this awkward thing where you know, you're trying to figure out who am I going to talk to or how's it going to go. You know, some of you social guys don't have a problem with that, but apparently I do because I'm a goof. You going to be my, my assistant? You, gonna, you still doing good? Yeah? Look at this. Look at this. Bugs in there. Look, soap. So I, you know, I had some Adam stuff to give out and, you know, you know, I'm trying to get over there to get something to eat and it's like one person after another meeting, meeting so many people and again, everybody sort of knows, knows me as the goofball on the internet and so it was sort of an easy, much easier transition for, for me from not knowing anybody to becoming BFFs with about 40 other dudes. And then you know, a bunch of guys would introduce me to their wife and say, honey, here's the crazy guy from, uh, from YouTube. This is Matt. And sure enough, <laughs> they would be rolling their eyes at me just like my wife does and, uh, and you know, kind of getting a chuckle out of it. So I guess I was happy to be the, the jester of the event. But there were you know, 25 cars or so there. A bunch of guys were going to be meeting us the next day. So, in the, uh, in the morning, we get up, leave the hotel, and I come driving in, I think it was maybe the fourth or fifth car in, and sure enough, they, they sort of, everybody kept saying, well, of course Matt will be in the, in the bay of the, sort of the breakfast place, if you will. Um, it was a, it was called 401 Wheels. And um, they had like a little, kind of like a little museum type thing where you could back some cars in. And that's where we had breakfast set up. So, so I, you know, here I am, you know, probably one of the younger guys, the youngest guys, and, you know, being ushered into the, into the, you know, sort of the main display area with, three other cars, which I thought was pretty cool, you know. Um, all you gotta do is become a YouTube sensation and you get all, a lot more access in life than you would if you didn't. So the plan was to take, go you know, pack our cars up with all our gear, and we were going to stay at the Balsam Inn, which is over toward the sort of toward the east side of the mountains. Not quite to Asheville, but closer than where we were at the, um, 
on the sort of the, the west side of the mountains, the Georgia side. So we head out in the morning, start sort of cruising out. Groups kind of get broken up naturally. behind Sean and a couple other guys and then we you know so I, I, I didn't know what to expect I don't think anybody knew really knew what to expect so the, you know the plan uh, or what I assumed we'd be doing is I'd assumed we'd be you know we'd be cruising around and you know hit you know taking some turns and stuff like that well the, we'd make the left out toward Wolf Pen Gap in, in the sort of the northern Georgia mountains and you guys we hit as soon as we, you know, pull out, it's on. You know, we're we're not messing around here.
you know, I was fine with it. We weren't driving so aggressively that it was unsafe. But it was, it was, we certainly weren't moseying around the roads. We, I mean, Sean was, 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 was no joke. We were, we were moving on out. So, you know, the groups kind of get divided up and people get dropped and other people get added and there's some slow groups and some fast groups and, you know, just guys at different paces. And um, so we make, our, we make our sort of ascent to the mountains and our first... It wasn't that far in, maybe maybe 45 minutes into the, yeah, about 45 minutes into, we did Wolfpin Gap. I forget where we were headed to. Oh, no, we did Wolf, well, Blood Mountain, and then we were headed to, to Wolfpin Gap, and we sort of stopped on the side of the, on the side of the road. There was a sort of a truck runoff, and uh, everybody gets out of the car. They lift up, you can see guys like lifting up their arms. There's pits are all sweaty. Everybody's like sweating, you know, you know I mean, I think all of us were a little in shock at how it sort of turned out. We really didn't get behind very many cars. It was Friday, the traffic weren't, wasn't too bad, and we were, we were on it. You know, and these cars are so darn capable that it doesn't take much to, to you're moving on out and we're really not pushing the cars all that hard.
So we then proceed, well, everybody gets back in the car, we kind of break up into groups again, just kind of naturally break up into groups. You know, the slow guys kind of let the, let the fast guys go out front. And then, and what do we do? Oh, then we headed to, um, headed out to, to do Wolf Pen Gap. Then we, then we, um, you know, did some, did some other cool roads and sort of worked our way to, um, what was it, uh, Teleco Cats or Teleco, you know, the town, town of Teleco. And then we stopped and we'd packed a lunch. So we, we stayed there and hung out for, you know, maybe 45 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. You know, in, in so after a pretty, pretty fast pace, pretty awesome morning session, we then head out on the Cherahala Highway, Cherahala Highway to then, which was really awesome, by the way, lots of rocks, but we didn't get behind very many cars. I mean, we were moving. And um, <laughs> Sean, if I was in second and third gear, you know, up, up shifting, down shifting, he was in first and second gear, which was kind of funny, um, watching him hammer on the car. And, you know, not really hammer, but use it as, it, as it intended, it's a little bit more aggressively than I, uh, than I, than I feel comfortable doing, but it was, it was funny. It's, a lot of times I was right behind him or maybe two cars behind and he would just sort of annoy the crap out of people to get them out of the way. So we knock out the Sherahala. I keep calling it Shara, it's Cherahala Highway. We knock that out. And then, then we head up to uh, to Deals Gap. We kind of all meet at Deals Gap. All but maybe I think four or five of us who are in like a little different faster group. So, you know, everybody's telling us all this time that, look, you know, the, the Dragon really isn't the best road because it, there's just cops everywhere, there's tourists everywhere, there's, you know, people getting in the way and there's minivans driving around. So we, you have to do it if you're up here. I'd never done it. Um, but most people are just like, nah, don't, don't get too excited about the Dragon. So we get in the line. There are, let's see, about 35 of us there, and we're all gonna hit the dragon at the same time in a, in a row. 
We thought it'd be pretty cool. Of course, everybody's sort of going nuts seeing you know, 35 GT3s all together. By the way, we passed the other five guys that were heading the other way. They were heading back in as we were heading out. So we, 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 get, on the, we get on a dragon. Next thing I know, you know, Sean's leading us out. Next thing I know, we're, it's, we're on, you know, it's, we're on it. And, you know, it's 100 and, or 381 turns or something like that in 11 miles. Well, you know, the speed limit, I don't know what the speed limit is, but we were moving. And so it was epic. I mean, it was like a once in a lifetime there, you know, there weren't any cops. Well, there weren't any cops until the end, <laughs> but you, you could probably go to the Dragon 10 times and, and not have a sort of a clearing like we did where, you know, just like the stars aligned and we were able to, you know, sort of hit the Dragon and really get, really maximize it.
So we hammer through the dragon. I mean hammer. And I can't even imagine, I can't even explain to you what it sounds like having 30 GT3s howling through the woods at 9,000 RPMs. All different versions of exhaust and stuff. You know, a lot of people have bypasses and you know I have my J cup or J pipe, you know, side delete. So these P so it just sounded epic. So we're getting maybe the last mile. And you know, my radar detector goes off. Everybody kind of slows up a little bit. Well, there was a motorcycle that was going, was he going? He's going the other way. And he was behind a sort of a grouping of cars. 
and we went by him, and I'm pretty sure we ha we hammered, <laughs> laid the hammer down a little too soon, because he he heard us. And uh, so next thing I know, I come back, or we 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 sit at the end of the end of the um, the dragon. All of us kind of gather as a group, so we're gonna head back on it. And I turn around and I see this cop, and and uh, he's you know pointing and looking really angry. Well, he was yelling at the guy, saying. You know, if you guys do that again, I'm t sending all of you guys to jail. You're going to jail. If you, if you tr pull something like that again. So, we, uh, the funny thing is, I'll, and I'll, I'll put it in the video here, I, I didn't know this, but I, I actually got it on camera, which was pretty stinking funny. But I mean, I felt bad. You know, the guy was, he was just doing his job, and here we are, you know, not, none of us are really locals just kind of driving the road safely and maybe, you know, maybe, maybe a little faster than we should be, but it certainly none of us were doing anything crazy. You save that for the, save that for the track, but still, you know, driving spiritedly, you know, driving well within the limits of the car. So after that, we got on the road, headed back toward um, toward Fontana Dam. So we hit a couple, you know, a few more really cool roads, heading back to 28 Highway 28, back toward Fontana Dam. We all sort of gathered up, went to the dam, took some cool pictures, um, and then by that, and then by that point, you know, we're five hours into driving. Actually, we're you know eight hours into the day, five hours into driving, or something like that, and pretty much everybody's checked out and ready to roll. So we head back, jump in our cars, head back. We really didn't hit any cool roads on the way back. We ended up getting on the um, you know, on 64 and 70 or whatever the heck the road is called, but you know, the, 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 it was more of a sort of a, the mountain expressway than, than it was a, you know, a cool road. So we, you know, somehow the slower guys got out front, Mayor and his crew got out front. And we were all in a line, and it was only a matter of time before somebody decided, you know, I'm, I want to go faster. So, one guy, I think it was, I uh, forget who it was, one of the New York guys, he, uh, he decided, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. And then once well, he went, and then seven, eight of, all of us said, we're going. We weren't you know, going crazy fast, but faster than 60 miles an hour for an hour back to the hotel. So we get past them, we get way out front, and then, um, then you know, Ryan's leading us out. He turns down. I was like, I, you know, my, it, the, he, my GPS is telling me, telling me to go one way, and he turns off to the left, or to the right, exits. I'm like, I don't think this is where we're supposed to go, but whatever, I'll follow the crew. Sure enough, everybody turns around, and we get behind the slow people again. <laughs> And look like a bunch of idiots because, you know, like we're super impatient trying to, trying to get back to the hotel to go take to rest and get dinner, and uh, here we are looking like idiots coming coming in the back. So we get to the hotel, and Mayor, if you watch us, I'm sorry. Where are you? Where's the camera? What's up, bro? You gonna come out here and hang out? Be on the video? Oh, I gotta get something from the car. So, Mayor, again, sorry if you're watching this, but we get to the hotel, and I knew he, he knew this too because he went to 
scope it out beforehand. And you know, most of the guys don't care, but this is my nightmare. It's a freaking dirt road, <laughs> straight uphill. I thought I was gonna spin off the road trying to get up it. I'm the last guy coming through. Somehow I got in the very back of the pack. And I get up there, there's no other, we're jam packed in this tiny little dirt parking lot. <laughs> and then we, then we walk into this, and I knew this hotel was rustic, but it was on a whole nother level of uh, rustic that I didn't, I, I wasn't expecting, you know, forgive me, but you know, I've had some success in life and, uh, and I'm more of a Ritz Carlton kind of guy. And this was like the, uh, the haunted cabin from 1885. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I knew there wasn't any TV, so I came prepared with my, you know, with my computer and I'd be editing pictures and stuff like that. Well, <laughs> that, that didn't work because the internet was so slow. It was like probably like, I don't know, 18K or something like that on a dial up. But, and plus there's, you know, we had the whole, whole darn hotel booked and we're all trying to get on the internet at the same time, you know, trying to upload photos and stuff like that. Oh, and there's no air conditioning. <laughs> so, so anyway, I, you know, I looked at it, it was a, as much of a, I complained about it to myself for a little bit. And then, I mean, there really aren't any nice hotels up in the, up in the mountains, you know, unless you rent a cabin or a nice house or something. So, uh. But it was cool because we, we all wanted to be in the same spot and we sort of had this little country hotel. There was some poor, there was a poor, poor couple getting married and here we come rolling up and rumbling in our GT3s and just totally dominating the place. But I think they, you know, they kind of, I think some of the people that came to the wedding got a kick out of it. So we decided, well, I didn't decide, but we decided that we needed security. So, you know, now if you look up the Balsam Inn, there is no, there's nothing anywhere around. So apparently we had some like 80 year old security officer or something out there washing the cars overnight. And I, I think someone came and was screwing around in the parking lot. So maybe I should shut my mouth. Maybe it was a good idea that we had someone washing our back. Yeah, what? Oh my gosh, where'd you get that? Can you say hi to our buddies on YouTube? You gotta come over here and say hi to everybody. Show them your plane. What are you watching? What? George. Oh, George, Curious George? Yeah. Show them your plane, come over here and show them. You gotta come this way, you're too close. Come by me, but don't walk in the water. Show, show the camera. Tell them what it is. <laughs> Where are you going? You wanna hang out here or what? I guess not. So I rough it out, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure as much as I was complaining and looking, if the internet would have worked, I, was, I would have been actually uh, uh, in the car, bailing on the place to go stay at the St. Regis or something, or the Ritz Charlton Buckhead or something like that. Um, but it ended up, I, I think I slept better there than maybe it was the ghosts that were rocking me to sleep or something. But I ended up sleeping better there than I have really anywhere in a long time. So thanks, Mayor, for, for putting, putting us up in this uh, very, we'll call it quaint, quaint hotel. <laughs> but, you know, I got to be honest, uh, I, can't, I can't, can't tell a lie. So that was, that's the story of the, you know, the hotel, uh, Fiasco. My dad was cracking up at me the whole time as I'm walking into the bathroom and there's a, kid you not, a heart-shaped trash can. <laughs> so, you, you know, it's not, not, not necessarily my style, but it was cheap, you know, and the food was good and the company was great. So we went down and had dinner and some of the other guys who, who, who could only make it on, on Saturday night to come stay at the hotel would come. And so I met some other guys, and it was just really, really cool. 
it's just, you know, like I said, an experience of, of a lifetime, you know, and it'll probably never be the same. I know we'll do it again. It'll probably, maybe it'll get better, but it's one of those things you expect to be, you know, the first time was the best. We're reminiscing about this for forever. So the next day we get up and now we hit the real, the real roads, the, the real sort of un, untraveled roads that you know, not many people are on. We hit uh, 215, 278, just hit some really cool spots that are sort of on the east side of the mountains. And, you know, and, and now we had our sort of group developed of you know, who, who we were with, me and Mike and Chris and Sean and uh, a few other guys. It was really, really, really cool. Now, you guys know me. I'm a little anal. Just a tad. And I got, I don't know, I'm about to find out right now how many rock chips I got. Um, you know, that I wasn't too excited about. So I was second guessing my strong stance against clear bras. I was also saying that, well, and I actually made some calls on Monday to try to find a 2016 allocation you know if i could sell this car i really don't there maybe two chips um which is still better to me than looking at a plastic wrap on the front of the car yeah it's not bad So anyway, I'll finish up the story. Let me get this thing blow. Let me blow this thing off and pull it in. I'll finish up the story for you guys.
So the second day, you know, we head out and do some cool roads and really pretty uneventful other than, you know, we hit the Route Blue Ridge Parkway. We did, um, I already told you, we did some cool roads like 278 and stuff. I have some footage that I'll show you on that. Um, but all in all, it was pretty much the most amazing trip. Met some people who probably will be friends for life and it was just really, really, really cool. And can't wait to do it again next year. They're doing an event in the fall, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to swing that one. Not that and finish Obsessed Garage. Or at least, you know, finish roughing in Obsessed Garage, making videos. And I just don't think it's fair to the family if I take too many, too many trips. What we might do is we'll take a take the whole family up. I'm really working on finding a I, I really would like to do a get a trailer and tow this thing up there because I put almost 2,000 miles in the car which I mean that's what it's for but I don't want to do that too much so long story short epic trip can't wait to do it again it was amazing and amazing people and I hope you enjoy this video not so much me telling the story but all the stuff I plan, or hopefully have already put in the video by the time you're getting to this point of it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I got a bunch of other stuff coming up, a bunch of other stuff planned. Um, at some point, we're going to be doing, maybe Sunday, I'm going to be doing a correction on a, a buddy's uh, 997, 997.1 turbo. It's black. So I'm going to get some more black cars. But after that, I'm not doing anybody else's car done so thanks for watching dry this sucker off get it cleaned up as always make comments and keep checking out obsessed garage i'll be adding stuff to it every day Lightweight buckets? Yeah. Really awesome. large man in the bucket yeah, seats. Yeah, I could not do this. I mean, Does I it work? Do it. <laughs> you don't feel so good. We give you the gurney bump. It goes down. The seats it's go easy. down, though. Okay. You know, I think. Yeah, uh, it's in the front there, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Look at how much room he's got. Oh, oh they have a little adjustment. Vertically, and front and back. Right. That's it. It's it's front, front and back is yeah. manual, though, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there goes the bolsters. <laughs>